Africa. Hi and welcome to the Water Break Online. Another fantastic time to just be with you on this platform. It's amazing. God has been good. We've been going through this series, Guerrilla Warfare, and we looked at several things. Today, I'm going to share with you coming from a place that I especially like. If you've been with us here, you know that I like movies. There's a couple of films that I want to talk to you about that really lay the platform for the last thing in this series that we're looking at called Guerrilla Warfare. We'll be looking at the devil <laughs> today. The Lord bless you. Stay with us as you stay on the Waterbrook Online. I'm the Reverend Dr. Pete Odera. Thank you for staying with us right here on the Waterbrook Online. It's, it's amazing what the, the Lord has been showing us and teaching us. I hope you've been encouraged. If you haven't been with us before and this is your first time, I'm going to encourage you to just go back and begin this series. And in fact, you know, subscribe to our channel so that you can uh, check out all this wonderful material that's here. Part of the thing that I believe, and I just need to say this before I go into today's message, is I really believe uh, that the body of Christ, the people of God, need excellent teaching so what i've done is to stay here on this platform to continually every week put out new teaching that not only you'll be able to pick up today but then come back to and refer uh, because you know in the middle of the sermon if you're in church and you really go to a church service you know you really can't stop the preacher from preaching and then say excuse me i don't understand can you go back with this you can go back you can in fact you can listen to me at twice the speed and god will bless you so I'm hoping that this teaching is enriching you. Um, I want to read a couple of scriptures. 1 Corinthians 16, 9 is one of our anxious, anchor scriptures. The Bible says, For a wide door for effective work has opened to me. An effectual door has opened. But adversaries are many. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. I want us also to look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, not God's adversary, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. May the Lord help us as we go into this word today that will gain something of power and, and great wealth uh, for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Amen. One of my favorite genres of films is the Western. Some people like comedies, some people like action, and action and espionage is the other one. Action, my number one is action and espionage, but right next to that is Westerns. Uh, but I especially love the well-done movies. Uh, I think of two of them. One was the Clint Eastwood um, uh, uh, it was 19, I don't remember when that was. It was a Clint Eastwood film that was called The Pale Rider. Amazing. And the 1993 one that I think is on top of my list is the film Tombstone, starring Val Kilmer, um, Kurt Russell, and Sam Elliott. It's one of my favorite films. Um, those films typically depicted an outlaw and an unorthodox sheriff, just typically. This was the main story. And in those stories, mostly the good guys won. But none of those films, none of those films could have prepared us for Osama bin Laden. This guy was intelligent. He came from a family with great, great resource, financial resource, and it was amazing. Osama bin Laden was in our lifetime the world's most wanted outlaw. He mounted an asymmetrical war of attrition all around the world, including Kenya, that introduced us to a concept called global terrorism like we had never imagined. In fact, Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda made the terrorists of Ireland and Germany in the 1970s and 80s look like kindergarten kids. In the same way, in the same way, the enemy has mounted a guerrilla warfare against the saints of God. 
And if you understood or understand Bin Laden, you will certainly understand how Satan operates. Very organized, super ruthless, sneaky. And if you're not careful, it's gonna get you. But I want to also talk about victory. Today, I don't want us to focus on uh, the things that many of us like to uh, focus on. You know, I, I want to approach this in a very different way. I'd like us to approach it from a place of victory. Now, there's many people who uh, have, in fact, several people have asked me, why don't you talk about this? And I've, I think I've, I've found the need for us to talk a little bit. Maybe one day I'll go into the whole issue of demonology. But I do want us to understand about the devil. I want us to understand about the devil and how he operates. Um, I, I, I don't have time to go into a deep study on where... Uh, Satan uh, came from. We do know from the scriptures, uh, the Bible is uh, from Isaiah and Ezekiel. Um, we do know Ezekiel 28 I, and Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, teaching us about how he was in the garden. He, his name used to be Lucifer and then he sinned because he was filled with pride and he began to mount a rebellion against God. The Bible says there was no more space left for him and he was thrown out of heaven, thrown to the world and broke things as he came. When he came here, he set a hierarchy of demonic angels that now rule the spirit world in the dark places. So far, that's what we know. Now, uh, I'd have done a study about this, but that's not what I want to focus on because that's not. I, I want us to understand some things about the how, the mechanics about what the devil does. Because of the three enemies, the flesh, the world, uh, the devil is something you definitely need to know how to fight. You need to know how to, how to wage this uh, uh, war against this asymmetrical war uh, 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 that I, I'm now calling this guerrilla warfare that's been mounted against you. So let's understand how we can fight a war and let's understand what tools the enemy uses because the Bible says, I do not want you to be ignorant about the devil's devices. So number one, what does he use? Stealth and subterfuge. The Bible says here in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5 that the devil roams around like a roaring lion. So the first thing that we see is that he goes around with a strategy to devour the unsuspecting believer. The enemy will devour the unsuspecting believer. If you're sleeping, if you're just dozing, if you're not active in prayer, not studying the word, I, man, he's gonna do some, he's gonna do a number on you. Listen, I've told you that story. In fact, I'm, I know I've shared it more than once here about the story how I, I watched a live hunt uh, once, uh, the hunt of a herd of zebra. And so the lion, the male lion goes out and stands in front of uh, the, the whole herd and makes himself obvious so that everybody thinks that this is where the danger is coming from. Meanwhile, the females are at the back downwind sneaking up to pounce on the unsuspecting zebras. So the enemy uses the same tactics, stealth and subterfuge. A loud roar to instill fear. So he has all these books and, and movies to make us scared and then stealth to finish the job so that you don't think that you're lying on the job is part of his, his, um, his strategy. So you don't think that uh, that thing that you're doing in secret is part of his strategy, but it is, it's part of the strategy and we need to be aware of it. So he uses stealth and subterfuge. He goes around like a roaring lion. The second thing we see from this verse, the enemy is powerful, but he's limited. So the verse says, resist him. The enemy is powerful, but he's limited. So the Bible says, resist him, which means that he can be resisted. He can be resisted. So um, I, I need to help you understand because you know many of us are in the space where we are afraid of the devil. And, and, and the truth is, if you've been walking in ignorance, then you probably would be. But if you know who you are in Christ, that you are raised with Christ, seated with him in in heavenly places that he has given you authority Luke 10 19 to trample on scorpions and to have all power over all the power of the enemy God has already given it to you so he can be resisted so the devil like I said is a fallen angel he's not an equal to the Lord he's not an equal rival the devil is a fallen angel and not an equal rival to the Lord many people think that he's equal in force he is not 
The Eastern mystics, many of the Eastern religions, make it look like evil has an equal force opposite to good. And you know, they talk about the yin and the yang, but this is not the case. Evil and good, the, the Lord is not an equal with the, the evil that we see, he is not. God is omnipotent, which means he's all powerful. The devil is not all powerful. He is, uh, the Lord is also omniscient. The devil isn't all knowing, God knows all things. The Lord is also omnipotent which means sorry he's omnipresent which also means that the that he's every he can be everywhere all the time the devil cannot be everywhere he is limited he may be powerful but he's limited and you have power over him according to Luke 10 19 now uh, let's let's try and move quickly um, I need you to understand also another bit of the mechanics. The enemy himself has an army of evil agents. There is a hierarchy of demonic forces. I need you to get this. There is a hierarchy of demonic forces. The Bible teaches us that when Lucifer fell and became Satan, his name changed from Lucifer, which means the beautiful one, to become Satan, which means the accuser. He fell with one third of the angels in heaven, one third of the angels in heaven. These fallen angels became known as demons and they have classification and stratification. And I, I don't think I have the time to go into, that's a, a study in demonology that I think we'll go into. Uh, and in fact, people have, have um, given um, names to these demons and, and so on. The biblical evidence though, uh, suggests that there are ranks. In fact, it states that there are ranks. Let's read Ephesians chapter six, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So we see there's an arrangement. There's an organized, uh, an organized fashion of warfare that has come against you. Now, um, I am not going to make this an episode about the the devil called this or the demon called this the bible doesn't mention many names of demons it mentions beelzebub the prince of demons it mentions legion which had uh, occupied uh, a specific man in the gatherings uh, we um, mentions mammon and alludes to jezebel but many of the teachings uh, on demons are extra biblical. They're extra biblical. You don't find many names of demons in the Bible. And there are many books, there are several books and some that I've seen that talk about there's a demon in charge of this, there's a demon in charge of this, there's a demon in charge of this. Um, I don't think there's any biblical basis or evidence for it. There's no, let me give you an example. Uh, please don't get me wrong. I, I just need you to understand this. There is no biblical evidence of monitoring spirits. And this is something that, you know, people have said, uh, there's a monitoring spirit around, monitoring spirit. There's no biblical evidence of it, but that doesn't mean that they're not there. Uh, and I say, you know, sometimes this is to place fear. And many people who are teaching about this, it's because they've come from a world of, of witchcraft and traditional beliefs. Uh, where um, your activities, your activities that bring you prosperity or progress are uh, viewed, you know, there was this whole thing of jealousy and traditional, listen, let me help you with this thing. You know, even if it is, this is what I say, even if it is a morning monitoring spirit or a monitor lizard spirit or whatever it is, lizard spirit or serpentine spirit, God has given us power over all, all the power of the enemy, all the power of the enemy. Uh, and my thing is, let's talk, let's talk, let, let's talk, let's talk a little bit here. You know, let's talk a little bit here. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we're not fighting. We're not fighting your grandmother. You know how some people can come and say to you, oh, it's your grandmother or your aunt or anyone for that matter that is human. It says, it's, you know, um, and a lady came to me um, who's, who's, who I love very much. And she said that uh, this guy came and was saying to her, you know, it's your grandmother. She said, but my grandmother loved the Lord. She was born again. How can he be my grandma? <laughs> to, to say that your cousin looked at you badly and so brought on you some kind of bad luck is superstitious. Listen, I know I rub some people the wrong way because they want to hold on to their religious ideas and, and, and don't want to take responsibility for their own situations. 
So get ready to be rubbed the wrong way. So let me show you through the scripture so that you don't think that I'm just making this up. It's not your grandma. It ain't your grandma. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It ain't your grandma. It ain't your aunt. It's a demonic force. It's a demonic force. But let me show you something. Colossians 1.14 says, He has delivered us from the domain or dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. He has already done it. So, hello deliverance people. Hello people who have deliverance ministries and everything. You know, confusing the Christians to think that their salvation is not enough. Let me help you. Let me help you. Somebody gets born again. The spirit of God is not going to share a space with a demonic force. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to put that out there. Now, your experience may teach you something else and everything, but this is not biblical. The Bible says he has already done, delivered us from the domain, dominion of darkness. So this thing that some of y'all are teaching is not biblical. He's delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. We were transferred. Colossians 2.15. By the way, read Colossians. Don't just read Old Testament and, and you know, just the, act, the whatever, Gospels and a little bit of the Acts. Do some Bible study. Colossians 2.15. This is what the Bible says. He disarmed. What did he do? He disarmed. What did he do? He disarmed. What does to disarm mean? They had arms, weapons. They were taken away from them. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Hang on a second. This sounds past tense to me as well. You need to do some comprehension. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. He already triumphed over them. So he disarmed the rulers. This is past tense. So I say this. We are way, way too superstitious. We are way too superstitious for our own good, guys. Here's my question. If Christ is resurrected from the dead, is he resurrected from the dead? Yes. And you are therefore born again. So you're born again. So you can't be born again if Jesus didn't resurrect from the dead. You put your faith in him and Christ is resurrected. So you're now born again by that same power. How can the demons who Christ resurrected, they couldn't keep him down. He resurrected. How can these demons that were defeated in Colossians chapter 1 and 14 and Colossians chapter 2 and 15, how can they then have power over you? Just a thought. Either you're walking in ignorance or you're uh, in ignorance of your heritage in the Lord. Maybe that's one side of it. Or you're enjoying the games that many of our preachers are playing. You're enjoying it because it's giving them money. I've seen a lot of people going to these deliverance places and they don't do it without money. If you want to get delivered, let me pray for you now. May the Lord deliver you from the power of Satan. Anything that's holding you, whether it's ancestral worship, witchcraft, whatever it is, may it be broken off of your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give too much credence to demonic forces. Too much. Every day your service is about Satan. There's a devil of this, a devil of this. When are you going to talk about the victory that Jesus won on the cross? Not everything is demonic. Not everything is demonic. We do know, we do know that there are demonic forces. But we also know that they can be and have been defeated. And have been defeated. Not, how can you have services the whole year giving the devil the glory? Something's got to change, bro. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. And then, here's the thing. If, if you don't believe me, listen. The Bible says, uh, here's the thing that I need. God gave us a way to fight demonic forces. You're not coming to the fight with nothing. So this idea that, you know, you're going to bed, you're afraid, you have your Bible under, you know, there's stuff happening in your roof and people are walking. And I don't know, somebody's, you know, we say all these crazy stories. I'm, I'm dreaming about walking. People dream about walking. People dream about flying. That ain't demonic. It's just a thing that your mind is doing. Now, that is not to say that some people don't have demonic experiences. If you look at the Bible, it tells us things very clearly that there's a way to fight them. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Let me read it for you. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy, watch this, arguments. Are you seeing? Arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. There's no way here saying that he's grabbing your 
auntie or your grandmother or whatever and drowning them in the sea of forgetting. No. So the same way that the enemy mounts his guerrilla war is by creating, listen, the real way that the enemy creates, um, uh, he mounts his guerrilla warfare is by creating strongholds in the thinking of people. In the thinking of people. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about my experience because I've experienced what it's like. The devil doesn't play fair. He will take every advantage. Listen, don't get me wrong. He will take advantage. He will take advantage of any space that he gets. If you're ignorant, he'll take advantage of you. But don't play these games with preachers. You have the victory. You don't even have to wait for a preacher to preach for you. You don't have to wait for somebody to do deliverance. Put, deliver, put your hands on your way. Hey, we don't have that kind of time nowadays. Put your hand on your own head and say, I refuse to be oppressed by demonic forces. So the first space, the first way that we have to do this warfare is by fighting the battle of the mind. So the Bible says, take every thought captive. That's what he's talking about here. Taking every thought captive. Listen, the place where the warfare is really happening is in your mind. Is in your mind. Take every thought captive. Take every thought captive. I'm going back to um, Romans chapter 12 verse 1. It says, it says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of the world. And the patterns of the world is to have this, you know, superstitious nonsense that goes on. But be transformed by the renewal of your thinking. Renew your thinking. You can have victory over every demonic force. Take every thought captive. Now, in the instance where there's an actual demonic force in your family, in your home, at your workplace, God has already given us a prescribed way to fight this battle. Let's turn to Mark chapter 16, verse, Mark chapter 16, Mark 16, 17. Really simple things, really simple things. Here. Let me read you a nice little verse here because you know, we're going to have some victory today. We're going to have some victory. We're going to have some victory. 16, 17. This is what he says. Starting verse 15, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the world, the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Watch what he says. And these signs will accompany those who believe. It doesn't say these signs will accompany the bishop. These signs shall accompany the apostle. It says those who believe. Do you believe? These signs should accompany you. In my name, first thing he says, they will cast out demons they will speak in new tongues they will cast out demons this is what jesus said they will cast out demons so let me help you with something cast out the demon cast out if it's trying to hide in your money <laughs> it can't hide in your mind <clears throat> cast it out hiding in your mind cast it out hiding in your kids cast it cast out that devil feel free to walk around your house with the bible saying eh, the verse 16, 17 of Mark says this. Chapter 16, verse 17 says, In my name you will cast out demons. Any devil hiding here under any closet in whatever, get out in Jesus' name. He says, in my name. If you believe, you shall do it. First thing he says, right out the gate. Right out the gate. So you have a weapon that's called rebuking the devil. So number one weapon, rebuke the devil. Rebuke the devil. If he's trying to come into your mind, rebuke the devil. Say, devil, you have no space in my mind. And then don't give him that space. Don't give him that space. Second weapon. Let me give you another weapon. The other weapon is the weapon of the word. The weapon of the word. And put on to yourself the sword of the spirit. Coming from Ephesians chapter 6. If you look from 13, 14. It says, um, uh, let, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Ephesians. This wasn't in my notes. But I'm going to look at it anyway. Because it's important. We were looking at it in Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 13, it says, after we've talked about the hierarchy, so take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. And in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the what? The word of God. And it's important that you have the word of God. It is the only offensive weapon that you see in that description there is the word of God. Psalms 138 verse 2 says, Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, let thy glory be. For thou hast exalted thy word above thy name. There is no name that is higher than the name of Jesus Christ. There's no name that has any more power than Jesus' name. Watch this. But he has exalted 
his word above his name. So if you have the word, it's a weapon you can use against the devil. If the devil comes your way, you can say, by the way. And this is exactly how Jesus fought the devil. Matthew chapter 4, Luke chapter 4 says, it is written. Every time he came, he said, it is written. It is written. So you two take that thing and start to say, it is written. It is written. Let's go to weapon number three. Weapon number three is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus obtained our, not just our terrestrial victory, obtained our eternal victory. Revelations chapter 12 verse 1. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, the blood of the lamb, and by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto the death. Let's break that down a little bit. It says, by the blood of the lamb. Why? Because the eternal sacrifice. If there was anything that was accusing you, any sin, any anything, it was atoned for by the blood of Jesus if there was any accusation so when we come to Jesus what we're saying is I am coming under that blood I said yes I am a sinner yes there's an accusation yes I am guilty but I have accepted and walked into the blood I am now born of God and so there's no accusation that comes can come against me because Jesus died and this is why it's important this is why it's important we have to acknowledge Jesus died on the cross he died on the cross and this is to remind the devil that Jesus died and the Bible says according to Ephesians chapter 4 that he went even to the lower regions of the earth to find out just to let them know let the devil know that Jesus died and came to your domain and set the captives free that's what the Bible says in Ephesians 4 he came to set the captives free so we are free by the blood of Jesus, it's obtained our eternal victory. So that's another weapon. We need to continually remind ourselves that the blood of Jesus gives us victory. So when we go to the time of, of communion, you don't just go and just be quiet and, and mournful and whatever because of something that you did wrong. Remember, he says, remember, remember, put yourself in remembrance of these things. Put yourself in remembrance that the blood obtained your forgiveness, that the blood of Jesus obtained power over all the forces of the enemy hallelujah that's what he did weapon number three weapon number four weapon number four ministers of rank now if you read in acts chapter 19 verse 15 i, I say ministers of rank and some of us call it the fivefold ministries come some call it the fourfold the the apostle sorry the apostle the prophet the evangelist the pastor and the teacher that combination of ministry that those ministers apostles of rank they come into a place and they hold a position in the spirit realm let me show you from acts chapter 19 verse 15 we don't have time to go into it, but let me explain what happens so these seven sons of skiva they come and 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 they're trying to they're trying to cast out a devil and the devil turns around and say jesus we know he is the lord of all creation Paul, we know, he is an apostle of rank. So they know, they know the apostles of rank. You don't have to walk around and throw your weight. All you have to do sometimes is show up. So listen, I know I've said this before, um, but here's the thing. You know how people depend on pastors? Depend? Listen, any minister of rank just showing up says to Satan, oh man, this dude has shown up. And this is what happened. He says, Jesus, we know, Paul, we know, but who are you? the demons understand the rank in the spirit so ministers of rank so it's not entirely wrong to go to a man or woman of god who is a minister of rank to come and pray for you and speak over you but they have to speak over you don't let these men and women of god fool you into doing shenanigans weapon number five angelic hosts angelic hosts so I need to just show you two quick scriptures here. I think this uh, bears some reading. We're going to go to Hebrews real quick. Hebrews chapter one. Um, Hebrews chapter one. I want us to go to um, verse 13. And it says, And to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? And then he says something in verse 14 that I'd like us to pay attention to. Are they, the angels, not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? What is it saying? Are they, the angels, not sent to serve you who are the inheritors of salvation? You're the heirs of salvation. So the angels have been sent on assignment to serve you. So your angels do warfare on your behalf. But let me show you. 
an, an Old Testament example in um, Daniel chapter 10, verse 20. Um, and so Daniel has this great vision and this, this um, uh, angelic being comes to him and asks him, do you know, verse 20, then he said, do you know why I've come to you? But now I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of the truth. There is none who contends by my side except these, except Michael, your prince. So this is what he's saying. This is what he's saying. Let me read that again. He said, do you know I have... Do you know why I've come to you? But now I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. So there are principalities that can be and are being fought by angelic hosts. So there's angelic forces that are fighting for you even now, according to Daniel chapter 10 verse 20. Angelic forces fight on your behalf. So our job is to pray, is to pray so that it gives them the resource. Prayer gives them the resource so that they can go out and do warfare they can do warfare that's amazing um, so what do we have we have there one two three four five number six number six six is the number of man i'm not a numerologist but i just want to show you this uh, a submitted life a submitted life is a weapon against demonic forces the bible says again back to revelation chapter 12 verse 11 it says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word so they have the blood and they had the word which i've already talked about but the word of their testimony for they love not their lives even unto the death let me show you something here in revelations uh, revelations chapter uh, 12 that's revelations 12 11. that word there's two words there that i want you to pay attention to and they conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony that word testimony is the word martyria it's where we get our word martyr they love not their lives even unto the death that word their testimony materia martyria means martyria is the word we get martyr from it's where we get the word martyr they didn't love their life even and this is the thing a life that is fully submitted to god that hey the devil is afraid of a person who's not afraid to die if you're not afraid to die, you say, devil, do your worst. Do your worst. I'm not afraid to die. If I die, I'm going to meet with Jesus. But while I'm here, I'm going to give you hell, devil. That kind of a person, that kind of a submitted life is a weapon in the hands of a mighty God. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the weapon called prayer. Prayer, in fact, he says, resist him standing strong in your faith. In fact, if you, if you think about what Peter was saying, he's, he's talking in the uh, context, context of uh, uh, a conflict that these people were experiencing because they were uh, under persecution. But if we will pray, we've looked at this before. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41, remember who's talking about this. this is Peter who's writing. He says, resist him. Because he knew back then in Matthew 26 that when there was an opportunity for him to become a resistor, to come into the resistance, the movement, resistant movements of God, that he failed because there was something he missed out on, which was prayer. Jesus told him in 2641, watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation. So prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. We haven't gone into praise as a weapon. We haven't gone into your community as a weapon because I don't have time for that. But I've given you seven weapons that you can use. And maybe that's a subtitle that we can use. Seven weapons to fight against the devil. Rebuke the devil. Put in the word. Use the word. Use the blood of Jesus. Use the ministers of rank. Uh, let's call on our angelic hosts. Let's use our submitted life and let's pray. Seven weapons that you can use that I think that will be a blessing to your life. I hope that this has given you the tools to fight the devil so that you'll understand what Paul was talking about when he says that the Lord has put him under your feet. That's where he's supposed to be. Allow me to pray with you. Father, thank you. Thank you that you brought us to this space. Thank you that you've given us victory not just over the world, not just over our flesh, but over the enemy himself. We thank you that, that that victory is in you. And so we come again and renew our 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 contract. We renew our covenant with you in saying that, Lord, we are sure that we are in you. And Father, those who are not sure, Father, they bring their lives today. We bring ourselves to you and we submit to you and ask for your forgiveness and your clearing of us in the heavenly realms, that in the celestial space, that there's no accusation against us. We belong to Jesus. We've asked him for forgiveness of our sins. So forgive us of our sins, O oh God. And now that we belong to you and there's no accusation, Father, 
going to vanquish the enemy using these weapons. That, Lord, we will see victory. That we will see people delivered from the power of darkness because of ignorance. Father, that the enemy will never take advantage of us again in the mighty name of Jesus. That fear will leave us and that victory will come into our lives. And so I pray that, Lord God, you will cause this to be a space where we will walk in victory. Thank you, Lord God, that we triumph in you. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that the Lord will bless you. I'm the Reverend Dr. Peter there, right here on the Wonderful Combat. Hey, thank you for staying with us all the way until the end. What a joy. Isn't that victorious? Isn't that wonderful? I'm just, I've just been so tired of the negative way in which, you know, we constantly portray that we are weak and that we constantly have to have 24-hour prayer because the devil this, the devil that, the devil this. He is a vanquished enemy. I hope that this is encouraging to you. Call somebody. Send this message to somebody. Tell them that you can have victory. You can sleep peacefully at night because God grants us peace because of the blood of Jesus. The seven weapons that we can use. Use this as often as you can and it will be a blessing. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do today is share. Share this with somebody who will need it. Somebody who's been tormented by the evil one because of ignorance or because of pacts or something that they made with the enemy. Help them come into the space where God is giving them victory because that victory has already been guaranteed. So share with them. The second thing I want to say to you is this is hey thank you for your support your financial gifts have kept us here we're over here and you can look and see all the equipment you can see the mic the uh, computer the whatever lights and everything this stuff over here you know and, and we're here at uh, Kofisi uh, Africa it's great but it's not free it's not free so your giving has supported us and brought us into this place so thank you thank you if you've supported us if you haven't this is your opportunity there's two ways to do this Number one, you can use our bank. Our bank is Stanbic Bank Kenya and our account name is Waterbrook Ministry. That's Waterbrook Ministry at Stanbic Bank Kenya. And so uh, you can put a standing order uh, every month you want to give to this ministry. Great, we'll receive it. And every, every month, or you want to do a one-time gift, uh, thank you for your giving. There's somebody who gave us a substantial gift recently and didn't say the name, but the Lord truly blessed you. Thank you for your invisible giving. I want to just ask that the Lord will bless you and bless you. So the account name is Waterbrook Ministry. Uh, the bank is uh, Stanbic Bank Kenya. The branch is uh, Kenyatta Avenue branch. And the account number is, watch this, 0, 10,286-7596. But it's also scrolling at the bottom of your screen. I'll say that again. Waterbrook Ministry, Stanbic Bank, Kenya, uh, Kenyatta Avenue branch. Account number is 0, 10,286-7596. Or you want to be a blessing to us through your mobile money, mobile money platform. We're working on the other platforms as well. We'll soon get back to you about that one. But we do have an M-Pesa account and that uh, you can give is 345086. That's 345086. It's a pay bill. So you hit the pay bill, an account number will come. You can put your name or your reason for giving. So thank you. Thank you one more time for your support. It's gone a long way, not just to pay for this, but also to support the missionaries who are with us in the field. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. And may he continue to give you victory in everything you do against the flesh, against the world, and against the devil himself. You have the victory. I'm the Reverend Dr. Peter there, right here on the Waterbrook Online. Well, God bless you. Well, Africa. Africa.